well to this video, Will Sebastian here. Don't forget you can get our free training underneath. And if you really want to learn to trade with myself and my co-founder, co-mentor, Alex Soro, go underneath that and there's the onboarding link. We're going to be live for about 10 hours plus this week, coming in five Zoom sessions, Monday to Friday, as we normally do. So markets are moving a little bit. Unfortunately, a couple of negative sentiment aspects coming in. In this uh, video, I'm basically going to show you how to sit yourself for the week ahead, um, like you know, we will be going into markets tomorrow. When we start our Zoom live trading session on Monday at noon time with all our new Academy members and our older ones, we're going to go over several different things that will set us up for the week. And we do this routinely so that our trading plans are carefully thought out, our risk management is in control, we're not going to over leverage, we're not going to go crazy, and therefore we can. We can basically trade consistently for income, as you've probably seen across all our public showcase. So first things first, if you're looking to trade Forex markets, um, I really would consider setting the, the Dixie, the dollar index, before you start anything. Of course, the dollar um, is basically what is going to rule Forex markets. Um, the dollar is the most sought after currency, um, it's the most focused on. Um, and at the end of the day, whatever is going on with the US is going to directly affect markets mostly everywhere else. Um, whether it's crypto or stock indexes, effects, individual stocks, commodities, metals, whatever it is, the US is a massive player in the world. But particularly for FX markets, I would start off by looking where you find yourself on the dollar index. The dollar index, for those of you who don't know, it's basically an index of currencies weighted against uh, the dollar. Mostly about 58% of that is the euro. And the rest is scattered between your New Zealand dollar or dollar, etc. So um, at this current point on your Dixie, or at least on a Sunday pre-market open, like uh, I find myself now and, you know, the rest of our traders find themselves, um, I'm really looking for two things. Firstly, I'm looking for the technical bias, where we find ourselves from a technical perspective. And I also really want to hone in and understand where we find ourselves on a sentiment bias. Now, you'll hear from most traders or most mentors or whoever it is, um, that you need a fundamental and a technical bias. Some uh, traders will just say they trade only with technicals. Now, for me personally, that's a bit of a problem. Um, but for them, if it works, it works. Uh, but I just think if you don't know what's driving the markets, you don't know how harsh markets are driving, you haven't got any idea of the danger, your risk isn't going to change um, in terms of your sizing. And of course, then you could be short the Dixie now within massive momentum to the upside on the dollar, which is what we saw on Friday and what we might see going into this week. Or at least it seems slightly more probable that that would be the case. Doesn't mean it's not short. It just means that you need to change the size of your entry to fit the risk of the market. That's the point of sentiment. You know where the market's going. And of course, you know how harshly it's going there. And we do sentiment reviews all the time. Every day we post all the news and what we think. And that's in our Discord. Of course, like I said, underneath you can get this. Now, if you watch the whole thing through, you'll also get my bias. So make sure you're here from now to the end. So where do we find ourselves? Well, if we just simply look at our stock oscillator, we're coming up into overbought. Um, if you look at this from a weekly perspective, you know, we've had this upwards trajectory pretty much since Christmas, 26 of December, Tuesday, 2023. You get a little blip to the downside on um, positive rhetoric. So you had Powell saying things are fine, blah, blah, blah. You had, you know, numerous rate cuts on the board, believe it or not, uh, at the start of the year suddenly that's no longer the case and it looks like there could even be a hike, believe it or not, again. So that's what's driving the force to the upside now. It's the fear, it's the worry. If you look at anything um, indicator-wise, the fear and greed index is a really good thing to, to use because it tells you really the short or long side bias within markets or the risk on and risk off approach traders might be undertaking. So if it was risk on, Traders are happy to take risk. You know, they're not particularly concerned about geopolitical tensions, worries in, you know, markets via central banks, for example, being worried about inflation or keeping rates higher and squeezing consumers, slowing down the economy. 
you know, that it, it doesn't phase them. Uh, on a risk-off environment, it would be the case that, you know, it's the opposite. They're a bit more tentative, they're a bit more worried. So we're now seeing the risk-off market present itself because there's worries. And like I said, within the fear and greed index, there's fear coming in the market. Traders are getting scared. When they get scared, they, you know, they treat the dollar as a place to run because if the Fed is saying that they want to sustain those rates, it's going to be a safer investment to put your money in those than to uh, gamble, essentially, on other things. That's why you've seen crypto just get crushed the last year. Uh, people don't want to gamble. Investors don't want to gamble anymore. Now, what you have seen, because the Eurozone and the US have taken um, reasonably similar action over the last year or so, um, you know, keeping the rates higher, raising them, and then... Well, the rhetoric was to lower them, and now it's now the, the really interesting thing here is that this range you've got sideways that was sustained on a similar undertaking by both major central banks. Looks like it's coming to an end. You had rhetoric from the ECB saying they want to diverge from the Fed. Now, if the ECB diverges from the Fed, what they mean is things are okay in the eurozone, so we can start lowering rates, so we can look at lowering rates. And you've now got the Fed saying they could. I wouldn't rule out a hike. So the divergence there is one economy is saying, let's lessen the rate. So the saving people who want to save, pull their money away. And then you've got the US saying, you know, save here, basically, with a big sign, put your money here, because if they're keeping rates high for longer, the return on investment for, for uh, you know, that inflow of money is going to be higher. So if that sentiment continues, and it looks like that's the way it's going, I wouldn't be shocked if you end up much higher, okay? Like I said before, it doesn't mean it's a long because you are within this range. It technically, from a tech perspective, it's a short. Um, if you wanted to buy the dollar, you know, you, you're, you're a little bit late to the party. Um, you know, if you're buying now, like I said, you're buying into what is price action levels and selling. So it's not a good idea. In other words, you're buying into the supply of the market, if you like. So... Uh, I certainly wouldn't be long now. I do think it would get higher. I just think it's too late to buy because you've already had your massive leg up. If you want to buy the dollar, you're going to need a dip, basically. Um, so going into this week, you may find that if that sentiment continues and things get a little bit more harsh in terms of rhetoric from the Fed and the ECB is more dovish, it may pull your dollar index up quickly. Why do I mention the ECB so much? It's because the euro is, is heavily weighted against the dollar within the US dollar index. That's what gives you the index of price. The reason why it's called an index is because it's measured against a basket of currencies. It's like a stock market, if you if you like, or an index market in the same way. It's weighted against loads of different individual parts. So if that does become the case, dollar bulls um, will bring it up there. Now, if you have a complete turnaround, which seems very much less likely, especially the way things are going, um, and you end up down here, that would come from easing, easing rhetoric or dovish rhetoric within the, uh, the Fed, okay? And that would bring you down here. And equally, like I said, it would have to be a big U-turn from the ECB. So it doesn't look like that. It looks like the data is supporting the ECB. They know that. Quite comfortable. There's no scares, at least at this point. So now we know what way the dollar is looking like it's heading. And remember also, we often talk in our content and our live room about level decay. This is an example of level decay. And it's also an example of where if you didn't even read the fundamental bias or the technical bias within this market, you can see how, how strong the momentum is. Now, when the momentum is strong, straight into a level that you've hit so many times, um, you know, you've got to take inference on that and you've got to understand that ultimately this level will get broken. OK, the market will either come up or it will come down at some point. If it just keeps hitting the same level of resistance, the resistance breaks. OK, that is how ranges work. They stay, market stay sideways a little bit like you saw uh, down here until eventually the market says, OK, well, we've had enough of hitting this same area we're going to break through. And you saw that over here. Now, it doesn't mean it's definitely going to break up to the, you know, to the upside. It means that it could go the other way and break the lower boundary of the sideways movement. But like I said, 
you can only hit it so many times before you go through. And if you've got a big, strong green candle pushing you into an area you've hit so many times, you've got strong sentiment. Again, for me, it's not a heavy short whatsoever. You know, in many cases, you can even just hold off entirely. Um, your next level of key price action is slightly higher up. That's why I labeled it as notable for where the dollar index could go and the dollar strength overall. So you're checking your Dixie, you know the direction of the dollar, that's it's likely. You know where you'd like it to stop, where you'd like to begin, and you've got all that nailed. Now you could, you know, it depends on the markets you're gonna go for. If you're going for gold, it's it's been very much unhinged um, on uh, new sentiment, but the bias overall is clearly positive, that's why it's going up. As gold this week particularly, I would just, you know, avoid, unless you're gonna short it with extremely minimal risk, not much you can do. And I've done that in many videos. If you want to check that out, just go on the, my channel. It's posted recently. So obviously the inverse of the Dixie going up is the Euro dollar going down. Remember, like I said, the Euro dollar is heavily based against um, within what well, the Euro is heavily based within the dollar index. Uh, you've got to remember that, uh, you know, like I said, these are essentially the flip side. So if the dollar index goes up, it's likely you'll pull this down. OK. Now, again, like I said, ECB is looking dovish, US looking hawkish. It's a double whammy and um, it could really devalue the currency so much so that you get under parity again, like you did here. I wouldn't be surprised if you get down there. If you get down there, you get away larger volumes of money loading in and perhaps take you for a market maker stop where the market makers get rid of those stop losses just there before you pile up. It was no coincidence, really, that your euro dollar shocked up from here given you had somewhat key support around this point but looking at the immediate future um i would probably say that you know it's reasonably likely that that weakness within the euro is going to persist i think you've got reasonable uh long side entries here but again it will be dictated by the sentiment at the time the sentiment is still weak um, you know, going into next week, I would space out my longs till down here. And I would just be careful because, like I said, with your Dixie, and again, it's the inverse, you know, you've gone sideways based on the same rhetoric. There's no clear reason to invest in the dollar or invest in the euro. Now, there's a reason to invest in the dollar rather than the euro. Um, but in many cases, what happens in the US affects everywhere anyway. So you may see that unfold. I'm not interested in longs unless you get slightly lower. It's the same on your pound dollar, euro dollar. I do have very light longs on these, very light longs um, across the board, okay? Or reasonable longs, just in case it does bounce, but I'm fully aware there's a really good chance you'll get down here. And again, it's just because of the sentiment. If you're taking longs now and banking your whole trading account on it, you are just trading completely against momentum number one, which is fine because it's still a long, but, it's less likely your long is going to be successful because there's no reason for the for, for pound to be invested in rather than the dollar at this point. So you've got to understand that the markets are completely ruled by sentiment. At the end of the day, the reason why buying and selling occurs is always going to be fundamental. The reason why we use technical zones where you can see orders going in and out is because they give us a basis for entry. They tell us where orders have gone in and out before, and it just puts the probability up. But overall, what's going to bring the market up or down long term is always going to be sentiment. Um, and giving good gaps within that sentiment change is really wise, because it means that when you do get down here, it's likely the sentiment might flip. OK. In any case, if the sentiment doesn't flip, your job as a trader is to make good deals as the market uh, moves within its long-term trajectory over the long term, which is why I always preach so much about spacing your entries out. There's nothing wrong with getting long at 121 and then getting long at 115. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, it's a good space, 600 pips or so, but it's, you know, it's necessary. It's even more necessary in a market where the money is going into the dollar rather than the pound. So just bear in mind. Now, uh, Euro pairs, as I said, Across the board, you've got ECB dovish uh, talk, that's pulling the euro down, the euro is losing value. If that continues, again, you'll see it lower. Within that sentiment and that changing rhetoric, you could space those long entries out again lower, looking for some key levels of price action as I'm labeling now.
okay, around all these candle wicks. Um, nothing wrong with spacing it out. Don't say to yourself, oh, I've got to dive in now and take advantage of the euro fall. The sentiment is still against you, okay? So you don't need to do that whatsoever. Um, euro pairs across the board, euro CAD, euro New Zealand, euro ORD, euro dollar, all coming down. I, I would just space your longs out. Now, it's a heavy week for pounds, okay? Um, you do have a little bit more of a bias for the ORD, the New Zealand, and the dollar. Um, across the board, generally speaking, from their central bank rhetoric, okay? The pound CAD, you're dripping slightly. I would say it's similar to the ECB, although you are just uh, preempting um, news. It does look like the UK economy has grown slightly, which we've seen. Um, but in any case, just like your uh, euro pairs, I would just consider spacing out. I don't like the price action at the moment on things like the pound CAD. It doesn't particularly turn me on. Uh, pound New Zealand, like I said, the bias for investment seems a little bit more with the uh, the New Zealand dollar and the or the antipodeans rather than your uh, US, um, sorry, your your pound or your euro. Um, therefore, I wouldn't be shocked really if you you end up down here. This looks reasonable for shorts going into the week as well because you're popping up within a tight range. You're getting early rejection. You can see some sell side bias before and some sell side bias creeping in already. Same for your pound or you know if you're forming a newfound downtrend within these lower lows and lower highs, which you can see, or even long-term lower lows, the lower highs, you would expect if the inflow keeps going to the ord rather than the pound, which wouldn't be too far off where you're going now, then you would end up like that. And it would fit the longer term trajectory as well, which is more or less represented something similar over the very long term. You can see the market is somewhat sideways, which is why I like trading these pairs particularly because they're very predictable. I mean, within all of these key MAs here, you've got this massive, you know, load of technical bias. Tons of price action areas, MAs all together, probably get your uh, stock oscillator pulled down slightly, and it's going to form a very, very strong technical basis for re-entries. Again, you're giving yourself a good gap within the sentiment. If the sentiment's weak, you know, you're giving yourself time for it to change. I wouldn't enter at the moment... Um, on a long-term swing basis, perhaps, but in the nearer term, if you swap your time rings down, it looks much more attractive. Because like I said, if you're seeing weakness to the downside, it's perfect to pull back to the MAs, which you've got there, key price action forming, you know, what more could you want within a continued downtrend? Okay. Mm -hmm. So your Swiss franc, just to, to go over, I won't cover exotics right now. Your Swiss franc, where are we? There's various Swiss pairs that have come up and up and up on your, some of them have come down. So you can see your US dollar Swiss is up because of the hawkish tone within the US so strongly, but your New Zealand dollar, CAD, pound, all of that is down, okay? A brief pullback within a continued uptrend. Now, like I said, um, it comes mostly from the dovish uh, approach. You can see across the board, the Swiss franc was the clerk was the earliest to it, but the rates still remain considerably lower than everyone else. So I wouldn't be shocked if you if you miss around. I don't think you're going to get much off these Swiss franc pairs. Um, the rates are still higher. You just have to wait for things like the pound, the ord, and the New Zealand to speak on it. Um, if you look at the Euro Swiss, okay, you've got the same thing as the Euro pound. So it tells you a little bit well where your pounds are going. Um, but like I said, it's it's UK data largely this week, so I'll be looking forward to watching that. This has just been caused by dovishness, but you're also getting that within the Swiss bank. If you get Swiss bank intervention, it'd be interesting to see how that unfolds. I would say Swiss pairs probably wouldn't touch them just at the moment. I don't like the long-term outlook down here. Uh, if you can get higher, would be ideal. Uh, whether you do or not, it might take a long time, to be honest, because you've got the SMB lowering. You've now got the, the ambitions of other central banks following, apart from the US. So like I said, if you're looking to angle yourself for markets this week, use the Dixie first of all. And compare compare where, the, um, where the approach is on all central banks across the board, because the Forex markets are ruled by central banks. So overall, it's all about the, the flow of money, where it's going from one economy 
to an avenue in terms of investment. Obviously, if the investment is more attractive in one place, that's where the money will go. Don't forget, we're live two or three hours a day on Zoom, thousand hours of videos. We will help you relentlessly until you get success. You can get it all underneath. Make sure you do. And of course, I'll see you next time. See you soon, guys. Thank you.